Hi everyone, my name is James Ivey. I'm Paul Drew. From the Studio Rats. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs> I know, see, I've got this rule. I only do videos on gear that I like. <laughs> We're just about to blow that out of the water, aren't we? You've just brought over a stinker. <laughs> it's not an absolute stinker. No, it's not an absolute stinker. So, a little while ago, you did a video on the, the legend that is the kidney-shaped pod. And probably our most watched video. Ridiculous, isn't it? Ridiculous, yeah. Um, now, the pod was probably your, one of your first guitar processor-y boxy yeah. things. Yeah. This was mine. This is the, uh, the probably one of the main pod competitors of the day. This is a Johnson J Station. I picked this up on eBay for 80 of your finest English pounds. Um, this unit, not this exact one, but this used to be the module processor thing i used to do solo gigs on did you this was my gigging thing i loved it right that has to be said that was probably 20 something years ago yeah and i really liked it so we are now in 2021 it's probably 2000 this was probably a 2000 ish unit yep. ish yes i think it's about the same sort of time as the pod i think the pod came out johnson probably thought Hold on a second. This thing, this little kidney-shaped thing, is selling so well. We'll create something like it. Give me a bit of history about the Johnson as well. Who are who are Johnson? If you know, so, if you know any of that. Johnson, I believe, are in another world. Soldano. So Mike Soldano invented this unit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I mean, look. Let's let's put it in perspective. Twenty years ago, amplifiers sounded amazing. Yes. You know, amplifiers have always sound amazing, mm -hmm. but. Guitar processing has come a long way in the last twenty years. Yeah, I mean, you know, my first, my first guitar unit was a Boss ME ME five, mm -hmm. which is like, I mean, I don't even know if you can even find them anymore, but mm. that'd be interesting. However, yeah. I thought I, I I dug this one up, and I just thought actually it's in very good nick considering its age. It is, and I just thought I wonder if I still love it as much as I did back then, considering obviously I've now got a myriad of valve amps and things. And well, I, I think the answer is pretty clear, isn't it? Um, let's give you a quick overview. We've got um, the gain staging. So we've got a gain, we've got a three way EQ, a level, and a master level control. We have a number of amps which we can switch through. Uh, the J amps, I think, are kind of trying to be Soldano esque. Okay. Uh, crunch, solo, clean. Boutique, I think, is something kind of boxy type thing. Rectified is. We pretty much know what that's going to be. Brit Stack and Brit Combo are kind of um, Brit Stack. I think is Marshall esque, supposed to be Marshall esque. Yeah. Brit Combo, I think, is kind of meant to be Vox. AC30, AC yeah. 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 Um, Blackface. Yeah. Says for itself. Uh, boat Back and Flat Top are both supposed to be acoustic simulators. Oh, okay. Boat Back. Um, uh, Not an ovation. Ovation style. Oh. Yeah. Uh, oh. Hot Rod, Tweed, and Blues are all kind of Fender styly, I think. Fuzz, Modern, British, again. To be honest, the end of things that I never used was around here. I, I was very much in the day, a very yeah. much around here kind of guy okay. rather than around here. Okay. Um, we've got 99 presets. We've got um, chorus, flange, phase, tremolo, rotary, auto, wire, and pitch built in. You can have one at a time. Ooh. And delay. Yeah. And reverb. Okay, so slightly different to the pod where the, the effects were sort of not baked in, but you know, you could have a combination of things, but they were pretty much. So, for example, if we just go back to something that I know is, is dead clean, so this Brit combo, I think, is or the black face. I mean, it is what it is, it's a yep. scoop, that scoop sort of sound. It's not horrific. It's not bad at all. Um, if you then put an effect in, if I go down to the chorus. It's a sound of its time. I mean, the effects are definitely better. I would say the effects so far are definitely better in this than they are in the pod. Right, okay. Wow. Uh, one for the Johnson. Oh, <laughs> hey, that's not a compliment. <laughs> no. um, we've then got a shift, which means we then go in um, obviously, effects in white. As soon as we go into shift, we go onto the red side of things. So I can speed up the chorus in a fairly nasty, horrible way. A lot more editable on the actual unit than on the pod. Uh, there is no uh, controller for this. There's no. Uh, there's no USB or anything. This is a standalone unit. 
Okay, so you, you can't deep dive at all. Nope, that's, okay. this is it. Um, on the delay side, if I hit, hit some delay. Or tap tempo. I can then go in and mess with the feedback. I've got a compressor and a gate. Okay. And they are on or off. That's yep. it. Yeah. I think what this thing did really well was the super high gain and the super clean. It did not do that kind of Paul Drew clean on the verge of breakup. Right. Very well. It does it a bit. Yeah. The next processor after this I got was the 11 rack. Okay, so it's quite a big jump up from Which that. will give you some idea of how long I was using this for. Can you can we try some more gainy sort of sounds? Yes. So let's let's lose the the chorus and I yeah. can uh, sing on Mr. Fex. It's not the eighties, you know what I mean? Is it not? Not anymore. Damn, is that wrong going wrong? Let's lose some of that Bring the ridiculous feet amount of delay as well. Try it. Great, that'll do. There we go. Right, so let's dive in for something a little bit more. I actually quite like this kind of crunchy sound, or I did back in the day. Do you know the thing about this, and it's the same with the pod, and, I, and I'm guessing it's the processing at the time, is mm -hmm. the amount of bottom end. Yeah. It, it, you know, stuck. it's just not needed in a guitar tone at all. All right, well, let's take some of that out then. Okay, it's a bit better. But it's the same, you know, there's that cocked wah sort of sound. It's like a low mid a honk. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, yeah. And the position of the mid frequency EQ means you cannot dial that out. Right. It's I mean, if I if I sweep the mid. Very uh weak mid control, isn't it? Yeah. Now, if we go for something completely more ridiculous. The amount of bottom end. Yeah. See, a, a, a tone like that is useless in a mix. Yeah, because it, it, it's it, just going to flub and get in the way and... It's got... No, it's, there's nothing... There's no track that would fit that sort of sound. Right, let's definitely get rid of that. No, uh, Brit Stack. Cocked wah. There's the cocked wah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It, it's definitely of a time. Yes. And I'm very pleased to say that processing has come a long way in 20 years. Just... You nearly swore then. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did, yeah. Um, what lets this thing down, Yeah. again, yeah. is the oh, presets. The classics. Okay, let's, let's not be too harsh on this. This is 20 years old, plus yeah. Yeah. 20 years old. Yeah. At the time, you know, amazing. Yes. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> that's, a, that's the acoustic simulator. I find it, and I, and I want to try and find a, a positive thing about this, but I find it bizarre that a company is trying to emulate the sound of an ovation. <laughs> um. Okay, the clean sounds, surprisingly, mm -hmm. it's almost like the opposite with the pod. The clean sounds are better on this. And I actually think if you start putting in some, uh, let me put some of that in gently. Okay. 
bit too fast, but yeah. But then of course you end up, and next to that is... The more you play through it, the more you sort of get, your ears become accustomed to the sound and you start to think, oh, that's not so bad, but put it on something, put it, you know, compare it to something modern, you yes. go, whoa! I think we're both agreed that in the last 20 years, amp sims have come on a very, very long way. Without a doubt. But it is 20 years, you know, in its time, incredible. And I think, as we've said, the clean, some of the clean sounds are very usable and the effects, you can dial them in really quickly. And if you want that kind of 80s compressed, kind of clean, quality yeah. sound, it's a really great unit. And at the time, I remember thinking, you know, that's what I like this thing for. Super high gain, yeah. super clean. It's not very great in the middle. And when I got the 11 rack, I went, oh, this is so much better for that kind of mid clean on the verge of breakup. There it is. Yes. Um, those sort of tones. Is there a place for this in the studio? Probably once in a blue moon when I go, do you know, instead of plugging into the desk to get that kind of 80s compressed sound, I think I'd get a better sound quicker through this than I would by going straight into the desk. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm keeping it just for that moment because it's not a huge thing. It's not like it's a rack unit taking up space. Um, however, what I think is more interesting is we've come full circle almost where we're going back now. Certainly you and I are going back to real amps, real heads. Yes. Um, kind of valve infused yeah. things. And I think yeah. that is testament to the fact that A, you don't have to have a huge 100 watt head anymore. Yeah. Companies are making these amazing little kind of studio heads. Yeah. And they sound awesome. They do. They sound really cool. They do. They do. So there you go. 80 quid well spent. Who knows? Uh, I leave it for you to... Stop nodding. Stop, stop, <laughs> stop nodding. I leave it for you to um, join us on the live stream and find out. And we'll, I'd love to find out what you really think about this thing. But be kind. So if you liked it, if you've got something out of this video, please hit like, subscribe, hit that bell. And for now, my name's James Ivey. I'm Paul Drew. And we will see you again very soon. Cheers, guys. Thank <laughs> you.